Okay, hello, my name is Rich White. I'm with the Greenbush Education Service Center and also work on the Edison Project. I want to show you now in this fourth tutorial a way you can share your worlds through Edison and, and Cobalt Worlds. Um, the simplest way is just by being on the same network, your worlds are shareable. We'll also show you how to um, take your C3D file and either put that out on the web or email it or or uh, even send it out to the users group at edgesim.ning.com for others to grab and then put in their in their directories and load them up and I'll show you how that works but first I want to show you how you'll atta attach to a world that is on your network um, and we talked about this postcard piece a little bit earlier but that's how we'll we'll do this so I'll click this postcard get postcard um, we'll see we are we are the Cobalt World 37, we'll look. And we'll see the other Cobalt World loaded here. So we've got someone else on our network. I'll just click that and then we'll decide which way we want to appear, if it's a two-way portal or one way. We'll just do two-way. I'll click OK there. Okay, so there's the world. We see our other avatar out there. We'll just kind of walk up. And there they are. They're um, there, I can you know, we can communicate now, chat, uh, T-Painter objects, we can build, um, do all kinds of things together now that we're in world. Um, so that's one way. One way to, uh, to share worlds. Now what I want to do is show you a little bit more about the postcard feature. Another way you can share your space, share your world, is... Um, Say you've got a user and you want to share your space, have a collaborative uh, session, and you're both not on the same network. One thing you can do is you'll go to this post, get postcard info, and you'll see in the postcard XML a bunch of uh, XML. Well, what you can do is you can take that XML, you can copy it, and send that through email or or however t uh, instant message to your to your person that you're wanting to do the session with they can then you know come in and paste the information you sent them in the postcard as xml box and then connect that way so that's how users can connect in a collaborative session that aren't on the same network so that explains um, this piece here now what I want to do is show you a few other ways. Um, we know that we can also load templates um, from our local disk and how we do that we talked about earlier is um, we'll just simply go this and go to uh, load world from from local disk and then we'll enter the name of the world we want to load like that. We'll click OK. And that world will appear just as the other world that the uh, shared world appeared. But in this case it's it's the uh, world we built on our last tutorial. Now we know we typed in my new world so that's the name of the world the my new world C3D and worlds are stored in your cache directory so if you open up your edusim or cobalt directory you'll notice in the cache directory are a bunch of c3d files and that's the one we loaded the my new world c3d file so to share that world we can do one of two things one if we don't have access to a web server we can just you know email it even send it uh, start a post out on uh, edgesim.ning.com attach that file to it other people can download it and then put it in back in their cache directories and load them the same way we got to our my new world uh, template okay so to show you how this might work had I placed my new world out there on a web space in this case um, we'll load world from web URL and I know that at edusim3d 
facebook.com backslash worlds backslash dino c 3d is a world and i'll share some more out uh, at edges 3d.com i'll share um, a list of the worlds we have out there and we'll we'll load load more up there too but um just to show you how a world that you would set out there on the web would be accessible. Now you see it's fetching that world, it's going out to the web, and it's grabbing it's grabbing that world from a from a regular web URL. Okay? So now that we've got the world, it's loaded, it's got it's grabbed in all the textures, and sometimes it takes a little bit if there's a lot of models and things in the world. Now I'll kind of just walk right in just like we did the other and now we, you see the world that we've loaded from from our um, from our web URL and you do the the same way unless of course the the I mentioned earlier if, if you don't have access to a web server just take your world that you created your your world dot c3d file look in your cache directory pull it out and you can start a post at edgesim.ning.com and attach that world to it. And what I'll do is I'll bring it up and um, I'll put it on our, on our, uh, in our worlds directories so it'll be easier to share to others. So that's how you'll share worlds. Um, this next tutorial, the fifth tutorial, I'll do some more advanced stuff. Um, you've noticed so far the things we've been working with have been these really kind of boring avatars. In the fifth in the fifth tutorial, I am going to show how, how you can use avatars that look more like something you might see in Second Life, some, some nicer avatars. So that will be on our next tutorial, and that's how you share worlds.